Another uh, condition that, that we see frequently in the EAT program uh, at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital is called long gap esophageal atresia. Uh, esophageal atresia is a condition where uh, it's a birth defect, a, a baby is born with it, and uh, the, the esophagus is not intact. With esophageal atresia, you, there are many different types, and to have a quote long gap type means the two ends of the esophagus are, are far apart. So if we have a, a schematic here, this would be a, a baby's torso. This is uh, the trachea and the upper esophagus in the chest. This down here would be the diaphragm separating into the um, abdominal cavity. Uh, and this is uh, the stomach here. The most common type of esophageal atresia, the proximal esophagus ends in a blind pouch and the bottom of the esophagus actually reaches up to here and connects to the trachea uh, in something called a, a fistula or TEF. It's tracheoesophageal fistula for short. And this is, quote, a type C uh, esophageal atresia. You can have certain type C's that, that have uh, a longer gap if this upper end is, is only way up in the neck. And so sometimes you can have a span here that when you disconnect, the distance to connect these two is just too far apart to, to pull together. The most common types of esophageal atresia that are a long gap do not have a TEF but rather the bottom end is not connected to the trachea at all, like this. Uh, and this type without a TEF is called a type A. Uh, and some of the gaps here can essentially span the whole chest. Uh, the, the example I had before, sometimes a gap of three or four vertebral bodies distance um, is too far apart to put the esophagus together. But if you have a type A and it's the whole chest or eight or nine vertebral bodies, there's just no way to get those ends to meet directly. Now, uh, a lot of, uh, for, for many decades, uh, surgeons have tried different techniques to deal with this, uh, this problem. Uh, most of the time, a baby with this will get a G-tube placed at birth. That way you can feed directly into the stomach. You, you can't eat by mouth because you're not connected, but you can put uh, breast milk or formula in a G-tube to feed the stomach. Um, the, the most common strategy ha has just been to wait over time and hope that the two ends grow together. Um, unfortunately, it's rare for that to happen. Uh, usually as babies grow in size, everything proportionally stays the same. So while the baby might get bigger, the esophageal gap will actually also get bigger. Um, the, the method that, that we uh, developed in, in, in around 2000, well actually Dr. Folker developed this method in, in Minnesota uh, in the early 2000s, um, is called esophageal traction to get the esophagus to grow longer. And the way that works is you'll put sutures in the tips of the esophagus and you'll just pull on it uh, and that will stretch the esophagus and that stretch is actually a signal that causes the esophagus to grow longer. Uh, it's a natural signal that the body uses to, to grow bigger uh, in all instances. It's triggered by bone growth and bone growth causes the muscles to grow, the skin to grow, everything to grow. And so you can use that stretch uh, trigger to cause growth. And uh, with that, you can reliably grow the esophagus from both ends to get it long enough to, to connect together. What uh, the different surgeons have tried this over the years, many have found, found it to be very difficult and complicated, primarily from having the sutures rip out of the esophagus uh, and just pull out and cause leaks. Uh, that can cause infection, that can damage the esophagus and sort of lose some tissue there. Um, the, the other big problem with long gap esophageal, uh, esophageal treatment is it's quite rare. Um, of the 
most surgeons in their entire career might only come across two or three cases of it total. So maybe one case every five or 10 years. So any one person's ability to get a lot of experience with it has, has historically been limited. Um, but having a program that specializes uh, in this problem and getting referrals from different parts of the country and, and different regions has allowed us to have a, a high volume experience with it to really work out the, the nuances and the details. Um, babies with long episoptical treatment, they can have other issues as well commonly, uh, problems with the trachea, problems with the heart. And so when you you develop a treatment strategy for long gap esophageal treatment, you have to uh, customize it to each baby uh, to treat any airway problems they may have with the trachea, uh, deal with any vascular problems they may have, blood vessels that are um, in the wrong place, either impinging on the trachea or impinging on the esophagus, uh, and, and customize a, a plan. When you start the, the traction process, in most cases, we can get the esophagus to grow together uh, in about a two to three week period. Then after that two to three weeks, you, you have gotten an esophagus that's long enough to now uh, suture together. The goal here, after you get the growth, is you also want the stomach to stay down in the abdomen. If the stomach it is pulled up uh, into the chest either by accident or on purpose, uh, those children tend to have very severe reflux issues and ultimately uh, it makes it harder for them to have a good long-term result with long gap esophageal atresia. So our strategy uh, is really founded on using traction-based uh, uh, approach to get it to grow longer um, with the details being customized to each patient. So what we find for, for babies with long gap esophageal atresia, most of them will require a series of, of operations, uh, sometimes two or, or even three or four, to, uh, to adjust uh, the esophagus and, and to uh, get enough length on it after the growth process to be able to, to put it together. In probably the majority of cases, we can do this as a a minimally invasive or thoracoscopic uh, technique and, um, so that there's less pain and, and less recovery involved. And then after that process, they need to start the process of learning uh, how to eat, um, dealing with reflux. Um, and uh, these children really have uh, a lot of complexities to their care. And what we've really been able to benefit from is a having a multidisciplinary team here that gets lots of experience with esophageal atresia. So we can uh, work with GI and nutrition and feeding therapists and speech therapists to really help get the babies on course to have a good comprehensive long-term result from the many different uh, aspects of, of issues that uh, babies with this condition have to deal with.